always know that you're going to revisit this story? Did you know it was going to be a TV show innately that like one day you would get this on the small screen? It, it's, I didn't know, mm -hmm. but I sensed something for a long time. I mean, uh, I happened to call the network El Rey Network, which is where they were trying to go in the movie the whole time without even making the connection. It wasn't until after I had the network that I was thinking about what my first show would be. Because I've used El Rey a lot in my mm -hmm. different movies. Um, and I thought about Dust Till Dawn, and, and over the years, for 18 years, I've been staring at a painting that I've had on my wall, which is a matte painting from the last shot of the original Dust Till Dawn, where you pull back from the bar and you see the temple. Mm -hmm. I've had that in, in my house for 18 years, in my office now, too. Um, and I used to stare at it going, I wish I had done more with that whole idea, because I'd done a lot of research into my monastic mythologies to try to come up with a new type of vampire, not a European vampire, but something more, since the bar was set in Mexico. Yeah. And uh, I'd put a little bit of it in there, like the snake cult and the dance and the temple, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't uh, really done as much because it was just in one film. Yeah. But I always wished I could do more. So when this network idea came up, and I thought, what could be the first show? We should do a show that has a familiar title so people are drawn to the title and find the network. Dust Till Dawn seemed to be such a fan favorite. The fans always come up to Quentin and I and say, oh, we love Dust Till Dawn. He would get that a lot because mm -hmm. he was in it. People would recognize him from it. Um, and it felt like perfect timing because people had asked for the net for this for their shows uh, asked us to do a show on this before and we always turn it down because Quentin and I control the rights so we thought let's do a show no one else can even make because we control the rights mm -hmm. for El Rey to draw attention Quentin's characters have never been on television he writes the best characters in the world uh, that you want to just hang out with for a long time and it's one of the shortest scripts ever from him you know because it was written for a horror film and his movies usually go on sprawling because the characters are so great, let's let's blow it out. If the film, if the film is the short story, this series will be the novel. Let's do a novel version of his story, and we have to retell it to, in order to set up for future seasons. So let's take those great characters he created and tell a new story with them in a lot of ways. Um, so with flashbacks and, 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 and new things that will happen and new characters mm -hmm. to build for the next seasons. Yeah, I was about to say, um, start, uh, it's the duration of all of season one, these first 10 episodes, is that the full story of From Dust Till Dawn, the, the film? Um, are you re kind of retelling that film or are you going to even make it even longer? Like the, that whole tale will take o over three seasons. Um, right away you see uh, it starts all at the liquor store, the same as the movie. But right away, even within the first episode, you see new characters, different fates to characters that you saw before, and you can already tell, okay, we're going that way with it. Um, and so you see certain events that you only heard about mm -hmm. in the film that you never saw before, uh, new events, new character ties, and at a certain point around episode four or five, you're in completely new territory. Even though the basic story is mm -hmm. still they're going there, it changes the game and then by before the end of the season you're already kind of already in a season two type storytelling to where you're now uh, following the new story that's already been set up so the, the, the ripple effects start pretty quickly by changing the story that dramatically is it, it are you finding a challenge when people have seen the film is it, like you said it's an iconic film they they know that wh what kind of goes down when they hit the strip club um, are you is, is that a challenge as a as a writer the big reveal or are you kind of going to coast into that you know like yeah there's no big reveal because you there's much more everything's tied together much more everyone's destined to go to that bar yeah. so it's not like suddenly it switches and turns into a different show um, in the movie it was like a crime crime film mm -hmm. that turned into a vampire film well this series is a crime saga with with supernatural elements and you feel that from the very beginning you feel that presence from the beginning so it's not like there's just a switcheroo mid-season yeah. it actually it, it's so much more impactful because by the time you get to the to the mexican bar you're so dreading what's going to happen because it's been set up in a completely different way it is really powerful yeah. to be able to tell the story that long yeah. and uh and in a different way that's really set up for it everything means a lot more than it did in the film so it's th almost like the definitive version of this story done in a way that can continue on for years and years. So how does this story fit in with your mission statement, kind of, or your mission with El Rey Network? Um, you have some specific ideas about portrayal of Latinos, Hispanics uh, on the channel. How does this story help to amplify that? Well, it's perfect because, you know, people think, uh, Hispanic network, they might think, oh, what does that mean? Is it all Hispanic programming? It's like, well, it's the same thing I've been doing for 20 years. You don't even think of, you know, 
Desperado or Spy Kids or Machete or Sin City as being Hispanic films, but they are. They're just because they're so much being able to watch by everybody, enjoyed by everybody. For those who are Hispanic, you're like, oh my God, we're in front of and behind the camera. We are, are really, the characters are, are true to life. So to have a network that's that way, this was a good way to show a series like Destel Dawn where you get drawn into the, to the idea of the show and you're following these characters and then you get deeper into Mexico and you get deeper into the mythology and suddenly most of the cast, most of the crew, most of the, is, has a Hispanic uh, personality and, uh, and perspective, but it's being done for mainstream for everybody. Mm -hmm. So this actually a, was a perfect first show to do yeah. on how it would be that. So you'd go, What's a Hispanic network like? Oh, Dustal Dawn. I know Dustal Dawn. I love Dustal Dawn. I'll go see Dustal Dawn. You don't. You think of it for its content, not for the mission. Yeah. The mission comes with it, but mainly you have to entertain. You have to make stuff that everybody wants to see, like a drug. They got to be addicted to this. So it's just got to be good, entertaining, and really high quality. Yeah. That's the main thing. Was, was it ever your, your dream, dream to start a network, or was this this something that came up and you're like, yeah, I could handle that? It was weird. It's just weird. I think sometimes you sense things without knowing. That's what I'm saying. You don't know. Yeah. But when I thought about it, I go, you know, it's kind of weird. But over the past five years, I've had my own network in my house. I used to call it that. Mm -hmm. I just, um, I would had all my DVDs and Blu-rays and, and favorite TV shows and movies and videos and short films burned onto our hard drive. And with a VLC list, I would make a playlist every night that I would have different ones, like Hitchcock Night or Grindhouse Night. or it's a And it was curated, curated mm -hmm. and people would come in, and it, was, and it was just playing all the time on my TV, because I don't have time to sit there and watch it all. <laughs> so I, when I'd walk through a room, there would be something else that I liked playing. And people yeah. would go, what, what is that? i go, oh, it's my own personal cable network. <laughs> and, um, and then I got one. <laughs> and I knew how to do it then. I was like, wait, you know, I've already programmed this thing. I have, I have a list right here of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I just put my playlist over to it, and, uh, and now it's curated content. So it's actually, you turn on the network, it's only stuff that we're actually fans of, that we really love. It's not just sitting there. Most executives never see what's on their network. They just put stuff on. <laughs> this is really stuff that we want to turn you on to, really want to show you um, what the cool stuff is. And, um, and give you a curated experience, and then create original shows that you can't get anywhere else. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit HitFix.com.